In this video, I'm going to share with you my three preferred self-defense items. Stick around. As you know, on my channel, I cover a myriad of self-protection tools. I talk about their advantages and disadvantages, but in this video, I'm doing a summarization of my three most commonly carried items and most preferred. I'll also share with you the reason that is. Now, this doesn't mean that I don't value some of the other things that I have reviewed, and it also doesn't mean I don't carry them from time to time. It just means these are my three favorite and most preferred and commonly carried. I've chosen these three because I believe they all cover a broad spectrum of scenarios. I realize that we all live in different places. We have different rules and regulations where we live, but this is me coming from an American perspective. You've probably already guessed number one, and you're exactly right. It's a firearm. In my country, in particular, I have the right to bear arms, and I most definitely believe that we should in order to deal with higher level threats. At the same time, I don't believe people should carry a firearm for protection if they're not willing to learn how to use it. I believe one of the greatest threats in society is someone else with a firearm or someone else going wild with a blade. And I believe that being proficient with a firearm is the best way to answer that situation. So that's why it's number one for me. My everyday carry firearm as it stands right now is the Glock 43X 9mm. My second go-to is a knife. I don't leave my house without a blade. You'll never catch me anywhere without a blade. On top of it all, a knife is just a tool that you need to have anyway. You may be trapped in a car, you may need to cut a seat belt off of you, you may need to cut something off of someone else to help them get free. You may need to open things from time to time. A knife is just an item of necessity and when you're in close quarters with someone and if you're in a close quarters conflict, a knife is one of the number one ways to get someone off of you. You can club people with things sometimes and they won't even feel it. A lot of clubbed weapons are easy to intercept, but people are naturally hesitant toward blades and pointed objects. And knives have the ability to pierce and hit vitals and get a shock response from an attacker. If you're dealing with a high level threat and you have a firearm, and let's just say you've emptied your magazine and you're making a last ditch effort for survival and you're able to close the distance, you're going to need something that can do a lot of damage in that situation. And that's where the knife comes in. But just as I've said with the firearm, if you're going to carry a knife and have it with you as an option for self-defense, I believe you need to engage in some knife training and learn at least some basics on how to use it. Because the last thing you want is to have something like that taken away from you and that's a reality that we have to think about that's a reality you have to think about when you're choosing what you're going to carry and let's think about this from a common sense perspective out on any battlefield you're going to see most commonly the utilization of bullet and blade well the world out here can also be a battlefield it's just a different kind i carry two primary blades with me every day one would be a small working pocket knife and the other would be a Beckwith Covert. This is from Fisher Blades out of Montana. This is currently my favorite everyday carry fixed blade. I carry it in my front pocket. It clips to my front pocket just like this right here. Sets in my pocket very convenient. I can draw it from this position or I can draw it in saber but as it stands right now this is my favorite everyday carry fixed blade. My third go-to for everyday carry self-protection tools would be drum roll, pepper spray. Firearms and knives have one thing in common and that is they are both considered a deadly weapon. And that is because they are deadly weapons. The pepper spray is a little different. Pepper spray gives you an option to go to when you may not be in the worst of situations. For example, let's just say you're walking down the street, you know, you're walking downtown, you encounter a public drunk who's just heckling you. He don't know where he's at. He's just in a combative mood. Maybe he's walking around with a shirt off. I've dealt with a couple of those. They're just out in public and they've had too much to drink. They're stumbling around and they just decide to make you a target and they're heckling you. Situations like that are iffy in the fact that they're not like a public shooter. They're not a hostile person 
wielding a blade, they're not necessarily presenting to you a life-threatening issue, but they are putting you in a situation where you might have to get in a fight. And having something like pepper spray is a quick way to end that situation. Pepper spray is good for any weird, random public heckler or disturbance in general. There are certain times where if we use deadly force on a questionable threat like that, you know, we could end up spending time in prison and that's the last thing we want to do. But something like pepper spray is that happy medium for situations that are not quite to the point of being considered life-threatening. But I want to give you a couple of disclaimers to keep in mind with pepper spray. Just because it's a less than lethal option doesn't give us the freedom to go around just randomly spraying people that we get irritated at. It's got to be a real self-defense situation because we can get in trouble with pepper spray as well. You've got to have a reasonable threat. You can't be in an argument with someone or just in some random dispute and decide, you know what, I'm going I'm to pop this person with some pepper spray because you can get in trouble for that. You can't just go around spraying anybody you want to spray. The second thing I will tell you about pepper spray is that you need the element of surprise. If they see the pepper spray in your hand and they think you're getting ready to spray them, they have time to deflect and cover their face and eyes. So you always wanna make sure that you operate with an element of surprise, even with pepper spray. I typically keep a small can with me. You can get like, I think it's a three pack maybe or a two pack from Police Magnum right off Amazon. So in summary, I have three items that I prefer. One allows me to deal with a deadly threat from a distance. The other allows me to deal with a deadly threat up close. And the third allows me to deal with a bit of a lesser threat without having to get in a fist fight with somebody. These are my three primary go-tos. It doesn't mean I don't have other things with me, but these are my preferred. In closing, I'd love to hear your personal protection strategy in the comments. It may not be just things that you carry, but you know ways that you go about your day to make sure you and your family stay safe. Take care.